Welcome to part 16 on this lecture series on the Second World War. We're going to talk about America and the Holocaust. Now, the Holocaust is a pretty broad subject, and so we're not going to go into great detail into the Holocaust in its entirety. We're only going to look at the American perspective of this. And one of the questions that often comes up is, when did the American public find out about the Holocaust? Often, most people believe that America must have found out, the American public must have found out about the Holocaust pretty late on, or surely they would have done something. I mean, maybe it was on April 4th, 1945, when you had the liberation of the uh, Ordruf, uh, uh prison camp there in Buchenwald, part of the Buchenwald train. This is a concentration camp. And remember, it is a concentration camp. It's not actually a death facility. Okay, but when it was liberated there in April of 1945, the U.S. troops found just literally piles and piles and piles of dead Jews. When uh, resources became scarce, when things became des desperate for the Nazis, the very first thing they did was start to abandoning taking care of their prisoners of war or their prisoners in the, in the concentration camps. And so they're going to die in large numbers. <clears throat> Eisenhower was so incensed by this, in fact, that he actually forced the nearby town of Weimar to come and every adult citizen had to tour this plant and he forced them to clean it up as well. Because he said, there's no way you can tell me that you didn't know this was going on here just because of the smell, right? So a lot of people tend to believe that this is also when the American public found out was when news in early 1945 started to come out about the liberation of these uh, concentration camps. But it's not really true. In reality, the American public knew about it much earlier. First, we need to realize that America has a history of complicity when it comes to things like this, in general, and in the, in the case of the Holocaust in particular as well. Right. And this can really be seen by an example in the in the uh, ship called the St. Louis. In May of 1939, a ship called the St. Louis left Hamburg, Germany. It was loaded up with about 938 German Jews who were trying to escape Nazi Germany, trying to escape the Nazis. Right. They were bound for Havana, Cuba. Right. When they arrived in Havana, Cuba, the Cuban authorities refused to allow them to make port, allowed them to disembark the Jews. Right. So these Jews are now refugees without a nation. Where's the most logical place to go if you got turned away from Cuba? Well, the United States. It's only 90 miles away to Florida. You can get from Cuba to the United States in a Ford pickup truck converted into a raft. How do I know this? Because somebody did it. Right. So that's the most logical place to go. The St. Louis went to the United States, but the United States also turned them away. Why? Well, because remember all those immigration laws we have on the books? We'd already hit the quota for Germans and Jewish immigration into the United States for the year. So here it is, you know, May of 1939, we're turning these people away. These uh, Jews now spent about a month at sea trying to find a home, if you will. And finally, what ultimately ended up happening is Britain, Holland, Belgium, and France all made a deal to split them up and take them in, right? Um, of the 938 Jews then, that put 620 of them back on the continent of Europe itself. The rest of them were in Britain. And as you know, this is May of 1939. Well, by the end of 19, uh, by May of 19, end of May 1940, all that region is under Nazi occupation again. These Jews find themselves right back under Nazi rule. Uh, those 620, most of them disappeared into the Nazi concentration camp systems, and only 278 of them survived the war. Of course, the St. Louis doesn't represent the beginning of the Holocaust. As a matter of fact, even when the war began itself, there was no real Holocaust yet. That actually comes later. It's another misconception we have. But atrocities are going on, and we know about it very early on. This here is the Black Book of Poland, right? The Black Book of Poland was distributed at the World's Fair in New York City in December of 1939, only a couple of months after the war against Poland had begun. In this book, 
it talks about the taking of Jewish land, the rounding them up, the creation of ghettos and placing them in the ghettos. The only thing that you don't have in this book is the <clears throat> the Ansatz Gruppen gathering up Jews and taking some of them out to, um, to ditches that were pre-dug, put them in there, and machine gunning them. Pretty much everything else in there is already laid out. The Americans already know that these kind of things are going on, right? Well before you have a Holocaust. And like I said, Holocaust hasn't even actually started yet. The actual Holocaust doesn't actually begin until the beginning of 1942, right? In 1942, the beginning of 1942, 80% of all the Jews that are killed in the Holocaust are still alive in the beginning of 1942. But in January of 1942, there'll be a conference held in the suburb of Berlin at a place called Wannsee. The Wannsee Conference in January of 1942 is where the German government will uh, come up with what they dub the final solution. This is the state-sanctioned extermination of the Jews. They had tried relocating them. They had tried putting them in concentration camps. They had tried putting them into ghettos. They would even tried uh, uh, pogroms in areas that they had conquered to try and uh, let the local populations take care of the Jewish problem, if you will, on their own. But now they decided the next step must be taken. It is only after January of 1942 that you have purpose-built death facilities being constructed. Right, purpose-built death facilities like the death facility added on to the labor camp at Auschwitz, that's the most famous, of course, but also Chelmo, Sobibor, Treblinka, right? These facilities will be built during this time period. And you'll find that in 1942, remember I said 80% of the Jews killed in the Holocaust were still alive in the beginning of 1942. By the end of 1942, another 60% of those total that have been killed will be killed in just that one year. It is the largest year for as far as the extermination of Jews. This headline depicts this plan by the Nazis to exterminate the Jews. Himmler programmed to kill Polish Jews, slaughter of 250,000 in plan. This is in the New York Times, right? And it's talking about this extermination program. As a matter of fact, it even mentions Treblinka, Sobibor, Sobibor, and Chelmo by name in it. So the question is, this is clearly, the American public knows about the Holocaust at this point. When was this published? This New York Times article came out on November 25th, 1942, right? The same year that the Holocaust really gets into high gear, the American public knew about it right away. So I guess the next question would be, Where's the outrage? Well, honestly, the outrage wasn't there just because we had a long history of not having an outrage over these type of things. It's not that we're not compassionate people, but first of all, you need to realize during this time period especially, um, there was a fair amount of anti-Semitism in the United States as well. Henry Ford was notable of being a anti-Semite. You couldn't work for Ford Motor Company if you were Jewish. Right? So some people in the United States would have agreed with Adolf Hitler and his policy of extermination. Also, when you take a look at there's there's several examples of uh, genocides that have taken out throughout American history that we have, uh, even if we've had concern about it, we haven't taken direct action in. in. Take a look at, for example, um, during 1915, during, the, uh, during World War I, the Ottoman Empire will kill over a million Armenians during the First World War. Right. You're going to have in 1932, the growing season in the Ukraine, that the crops will be confiscated from Ukrainians to feed other Russians. Seven million Ukrainians will die in 1932, 1933 alone. So I mentioned before, Joseph Stalin killed more people than Hitler did. Um, between 1975 and 1979 in uh, Cambodia, the Khmer Rouge will kill over two million of their own people. We were right next door fighting a war in Vietnam and at the time. Matter of fact, it was the war we were fighting there that we had just left actually there that had destabilized the Cambodian government that allowed the Khmer Rouge to come to power in the first place. And there's other more modern examples. Ethnic cleansing in places like East Timor, Somalia, uh, Northern Iraq, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Rwanda, Darfur, Syria, right? Example after example after example. Right? So 
uh, it shouldn't be too surprising that historically we also have this uh, uh, this complacency when it came to the Holocaust uh, that we knew well in advance um, here during the Second World War as well. We will, at least in this case, react to it in the aftermath by conducting a series of war criminal trials uh, in Nuremberg after the war to at least try and, and justify or, um, or hold some people to account for some of the devastation that happened.